Hi again then guys and welcome to another retro car review from way back in the day in Forza Motorsport 2 once again and this is a car which for those of you who did play the game at the time as I did you'll probably have some pretty fond memories of it's one of those cult favorite cars with fans because it was such a good performance car and the bang for buck is actually among the best in the game. Now this car in question is of course the Acura RL, based kind of on the Honda legend if you will, of course Acura being the more Americanized wing of Honda, and although this car was ultimately replaced later on in the series up until I believe at least Forza 4, I'm not sure if it was after that or not, I don't believe it was, by the Acura TSX, which of course is closer to the Honda Accord. Now that car has basically all of the same advantages of this one. It's a large, heavy, understated front wheel drive sedan. And although that doesn't sound impressive, one of the best things about that overall combination is that it allows the car and affords the car certain privileges which a number of other for instance hot hatches or sports cars simply wouldn't have for the first part it's a large heavy sedan that immediately means it's probably not going to have a pretty high category unless the power is really high as well in this case it's not it's 300 horsepower which is good but it's not amazing it's no mercedes amg or cadillac v model at the same time, it's front-wheel drive. Front-wheel drive cars in Forza are allowed way more limitation extensions on tuning because at the end of the day, you can put as much power as you want into it, but chances are you're not going to get most of that to the ground because of torque steer and wheel spin. Now, the great thing about this car and the TSX later on is because of the fact that not only is it heavy at 1,800 kilos, most of that is over the front end. It's got almost 60% front bias. And that means that even though, yes, being heavy and long in a sedan isn't great for cornering, you've got so much more weight grounding that 300 horsepower. And because of that, the torque steer, the wheel spin, and even to some degree the understeer through corners, which you would typically expect in, for instance, a 300 horsepower hot hatch, something like a Ford Focus RS of the second generation, for instance, it's not really there for this car. The fact that the wheelbase is a bit longer gives it a completely different handling signature, and although it's not the kind of car which I would recommend for a really tight technical circuit, because again, a hot hatch could beat it, it's smaller, more nimble, lighter, this is a fantastic choice on tracks where they allow you to use more of a straight line bias, because this one and the TSX which replaced it are fantastic for top speed, especially though in the lower classes, because this thing has that 3.2 litre naturally aspirated V6, 300 horsepower stock, 260 pound feet of torque, but it's only D class, 399 pi. And as long as you don't take off too much weight or give it racing tires, because those are the two things that make a front wheel drive car level up really quickly, you can put a surprising amount of power into this thing and get a surprising amount of straight line speed out of it, especially top end, even though it's still in lower classes. You could, for instance, tune it up to C or B category and have comparatively a better top speed than a lot of sports cars in those classes. Now, of course, it's not as exciting, it's not as maneuverable because of the front wheel drive and the weight, but for certain tracks, it's a very, very good vehicle to use, even to the point of being a weapon on some tracks. Super speedways, for instance, any track with a really long straight is gonna be great for a vehicle like this. And of course, you had even more tracks to use the TSX on later on in Forza 3 and 4, like Le Mans, for instance, where it's a fantastic car. Now, this one overall, Again, the reason why it's so good is because the bang for buck is amazing. The horsepower per credit, if you will, is through the roof because it's 14 and a half grand. That is dirt cheap. In fact, it's one of the cheapest cars in the game. And when you factor in the amount of power that it's got, the deal is fantastic. And to be honest with you, I don't think this car actually has any downsides. Of course, in the grand scheme of things, you could say, well, it's not quite as powerful as this, not quite as fast as that, not as light as this. Of course, you could say that about pretty much any vehicle because there's always something that has more power or less weight or better cornering. But objectively speaking, for a lower class sedan or even just a lower category, beginner friendly, dirt cheap vehicle in general, this is a very difficult package to beat. The front wheel drive means that the car will save you if you make a mistake through most corners by pulling itself back into line. 
It's very beginner friendly, very forgiving. The high weight means that it's not exactly twitchy, but it's got a ton of power, a ton of torque, even without tuning it. So it's versatile. You could drop the weight if you want to, make it better through corners. You could leave the weight high and add power, have amazing top speed. As I said, it's just a great car to work with. It really is. And ultimately, even though the car, as I said, was replaced by the TSX later on, which from what I saw had way more fans and was far better known than this car was in Forza 2, because in 3 and 4 the TSX ended up being one of those very, very popular leaderboard cars because people realised just how good it was. In Forza 2, I didn't notice that as much. There were some people who knew what it could do, but I don't think there was anywhere near as many people as there ended up being with its replacement. So, it's the kind of car that if you do go back, I don't recall if you have to be in the Asian region at the start of the game to get it. I think you can probably still buy it anyway, but I could be wrong. But if you do get the chance to pick this one up, it's an ally. It really is. It's a weapon to use in the lower categories especially. The value for money, as I said, is easily the best thing about it. So if you do go back, this is one of those cars which I wouldn't just say check out because it's cool or nostalgic or a unicorn. This car you should check out for strategy. It's a car that you need in career mode because you can do a lot with it. But overall, that's it for my thoughts on the Acura RL. Of course, a very reminiscent episode for those of us who did play it back in the day. And until next time, I'll see you then. But for now, as always, thanks for watching.